I'm a sucker for an animal that I don't have to clean up after and that sleeps all day, so I hope you are too. Hey guys, it's Katie from Yarn Society. Today we are going to do this Amagurumi crochet along for Kai the Kitty. She is made in worsted weight yarn and ends up being about only three inches tall. She's pretty quick to work up and doesn't have a lot to assemble, so we all love that. For supplies, you'll want to grab two colors. My main color would be white, so I'm using my Comfy Worsted by We Crochet or Knit Picks, their sister companies. And then I have the same yarn by Knit Picks, Comfy Worsted, in a pinkish color called Flamingo, and I'll be using that as my contrast color. I have an E, three and a half millimeter crochet hook. I have a yarn needle. I have some embroidery floss for the eyes and an embroidery needle as well. I have two stitch markers. I do recommend having two for the pattern and then scissors, some polyfill stuffing and a cat brush if you wanted to use it to fluff out your tail or any of your yarn, but it's not needed. It's just an optional piece. And because I always forget a few items, here are something I forgot. Pins for assembly, which are always really nice and handy to have. And then some fabric glue that's also optional, but I like to use it for the tail to kind of keep that in front. And it just makes it a lot easier than crocheting it or sewing it in place. Okay guys, we're gonna get started with the head first. So grab your main color, your crochet hook, and a stitch marker. If you don't have an E crochet hook, feel free to use a D. It'll just be a tad bit smaller. You can use an F, it'll be a tad bit bigger. It's not that big of a deal. We're gonna start out by making four single crochet into a magic circle. Here, I'm going to make a slip knot. So I'm gonna wrap the yarn around two fingers, crisscrossing it at the top. I'm gonna hold that tail with my ring finger. And I'm going to push that back piece to the front. I'm going to pull up and then make a loop. I'm going to use that tail to adjust my loop and then I will insert my hook. If you need a video that goes slower, I will link that down below. I'm going to get set up with my yarn and I am going to chain two. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through again. We are gonna make four single crochet into that second stitch from the hook. So in this chain here, I'm going to place my hook underneath and I'm just gonna complete one single crochet. Then I'm gonna place my hook back under there and make another single crochet. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through. That's my second single crochet. Go back to the same stitch to make your third. Back through to make your fourth single crochet. I'm gonna tighten up my magic circle. We're just gonna count our stitches really quick. Here, I wanna show you that we have our first V. So here's one, two, three, and four. So that will be our first stitch of round two. And then this little bit here is just from our slip knot. So you wanna ignore that. So we'll be working into that stitch here for round two. I'm gonna place my stitch marker on the last stitch of the round. If you place it on the first stitch, feel free to do that as well. For round two, we're gonna place a single crochet into that first stitch. You really need to kind of pull your hook all the way over and really fight to get that hook underneath those two loops of that first stitch. Once you get your hook underneath that first stitch, make a single crochet. We're gonna move over and we're gonna make three single crochet into the stitch. So here is single crochet one. We're gonna go back through the same stitch for single crochet two and then back through that stitch again to make our third single crochet. Move over a stitch and make one single crochet, and then move to our last stitch, the one with the stitch marker, and you're gonna make three single crochet. So single crochet one, place your hook back to that same stitch. Here's single crochet two, same stitch again, single crochet three. At the end of round two, you will have eight stitches. I'm gonna change my stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. I'm gonna tighten up my magic circle and then just make sure that you have eight stitches at this point. For round three, we are going to make a single crochet in that first stitch and then we are gonna make three single crochet into the next. We're gonna do the same exact thing that we just did. So we're gonna make a single crochet in that first stitch. We'll move over and make three single crochets. So we have single crochet one, back through, single crochet two, back to the same stitch, and three. 
We're going to move over a stitch and make a single crochet. Move over to your next stitch and make three single crochets. So here is single crochet one, two, go back in, and three. We're going to repeat this again. So make a move over and make a single crochet. Move over to your next stitch and place three single crochet into that stitch. And then we'll move over to make one single crochet. Move over to our last stitch, the one with the stitch marker, and make three single crochet into that stitch. We will have 16 stitches at this point. You can change your stitch marker. So now we're starting to get that boxy shape. I'm gonna just close up my magic circle one last time, and then we'll start on round four. For round four, we're gonna place a single crochet in the first two stitches, and then we will start with our three single crochet in the corner stitches. Here is our first single crochet, and then we're gonna move over for another single crochet. We're gonna move over to make three single crochet into our corner stitch. Here's single crochet one, back to the same stitch, two, and three. Now we are going to move over and we're gonna make a single crochet in the next three stitches. So just place a single crochet, move over another single crochet, and then move over for another single crochet. Make three single crochet into your corner stitch. Here is one, two, and three. And then we're gonna make a single crochet in the next three stitches. So here is single crochet one, two, and three. And then we're gonna make three single crochet into that corner stitch. So just go and make three. So here's one, two, back to the same stitch, and three. We're gonna single crochet in each of the next three stitches. So here is one, two, and three. And then we're gonna make that last three single crochet into that corner stitch. So here is single crochet one, back to the same stitch, two, and three. We're gonna end this round with one single crochet into our last stitch. At the end of round four, you're gonna have 24 stitches. Go ahead and change your stitch marker. Starting on round five, we are going to make a single crochet in each of the next three stitches, and then we'll put three into that corner stitch. So here we have one single crochet, move over, here's single crochet two, and move over for single crochet three. Now we're gonna make three single crochet into the same stitch. Here's one, two, and three. Moving on, we're gonna make a single crochet in each of the next five stitches. So here is one, move over, single crochet two, three, four, and five, and then we're gonna make three single crochet into the same stitch. Then we are gonna make a single crochet in each of the next five stitches again. Here's one, two, three, four, and five, and then we'll do three single crochet into this same stitch, this corner stitch. Then we're gonna make a single crochet in each of the next five stitches. Here's one, two, three, 
four and five. And then we're gonna make three single crochet into this corner stitch. And then we're gonna end by making a single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So here is one, ending in the stitch with our stitch marker two. At the end of round five, we will have 32 stitches. You can change your stitch marker. For round six, we're gonna single crochet in each of the next four stitches. We'll make our three single crochet into that corner stitch. Here is one, two, three, and four, and then we'll make three single crochet into the same stitch. From here, we're gonna single crochet in each of the next seven stitches. Here is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We're gonna place three single crochet into this corner stitch here. And then we're gonna single crochet in each of the next seven stitches. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we'll get three single crochet into this corner stitch. We're gonna make a single crochet in each of the next seven stitches again. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we'll do three single crochet into our corner stitch. And this goes without saying, but obviously mute me if my, if my counting is like driving you up a wall. We are gonna end this round with single crochet in the next three stitches. So here's one, two, and then three. At the end of round six, we will have 40 stitches. We are just going to do one more increase round for now, so go ahead and change your stitch marker. For round seven, we are going to single crochet in each of the next five stitches, and then we'll make that corner stitch. So we have single crochet one, two, three, four, and five. Now we're gonna make three single crochet into the same stitch, this corner stitch. Now we're gonna make a single crochet in each of the next nine stitches, so just going across And then we'll have three single crochet into this one stitch. We're gonna single crochet in the next nine stitches. We are gonna make three single crochet into that corner stitch. Single crochet into each of the next nine stitches.
Place three single crochet into the next stitch. And then we're going to place a single crochet in each of the next four stitches. Okay, from here we're going to change our stitch marker. We will have 48 stitches. Definitely make sure and count that you have 48 stitches because from here we're going to be doing a lot of single crochet. So we don't want to go back and take out all our work. For round eight, we are going to single crochet into the back loop only. So we're going to go into the next stitch. Here is our front loop, the one facing us. And then we are going to crochet into that back loop, the one that is away from us. So place your hook underneath the back loop and we're just going to make a single crochet. We're going to single crochet into the back loop only for the next 48 stitches. So you can just take your time and single crochet all the way around. I want to say thank you guys for joining me on this crochet along. I love this little cat. I do not think she gets the most attention <laughs> like on my website or anything but I don't know why I just love her not much has been going on around here I've been staring at my yarn just racking my brain trying to make a new pattern and it's just not working like the creative juices are just not there and it stinks because I really have some pretty yarn that I want to show you guys so I'm just going to continue to work on the stuff that I have until something just comes to me because I made a different dog. I don't know why I'm constantly making dogs, but it just did not turn out. It looked really funny. So um, I wouldn't even share a picture because <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. But um, so yeah, that's really about it. I did make a video, if you guys haven't seen it, with this actual cat in three different yarns. They were all worsted weight yarns and it was just a little bit of um, a cool thing to see the different size and like the squishiness of them. So I did that. And then I also, then I threw them all in the wash and I wanted to see how the different yarns washed up. So I'll be having that video out coming out soon. And that was kind of cool too. I don't really, haven't really washed my amigurumi. I've spot cleaned them, but I never really threw them in the washing machine. So that was kind of a, something different to do. I've been trying to record some like absolute beginner videos. So if you know anybody that's trying to learn, maybe point them out to some of those. I'm trying to show how to hold hook and yarn and um, do some more simple stitches. And if you're doing this crochet along, you most likely already know them, but if not, and you need a little help, there are a lot of videos that go a little bit slower and are really good for beginners. Okay, so we're just gonna continue to single crochet into this back loop only. We'll be working into this last stitch with my stitch marker. We are still gonna have 48 stitches. Go ahead and change your stitch marker. So here I just wanna show you, working in the back loop gives you this little ridge here. And we really want that because we wanna start making some single crochet rounds so we can start making her face. So from round nine through 16, we are going to go under both loops and we are gonna just single crochet in the next 48. I grabbed another stitch marker because I'm gonna show you guys a little trick on how you can mark your round so you don't have to start counting from the beginning of the round. So once you get about three to four stitches in, grab another stitch marker and place it horizontally onto your stitch. And now we know that this is round nine, so you can either jot that down or just remember that you've marked round nine. We're gonna continue to crochet all the way around, and then I'll show you how we'll move on to the next round. I did a little poll and asked if people, once they got to a bunch of single crochet rounds, if they were happy about it, because you didn't have to think about increasing, or if they didn't like it. And it seemed like most people thought it was like a nice break to just do a bunch of single crochet rounds. And I also feel that way, because after increasing for a while, you just want to not think about it. But I think after a few single crochet rounds, I'm ready to move on and keep it going. I watched a few good shows lately, I'll tell you. Um, I watched 
the thing about Pam, she's an interesting person, <laughs> that's for sure. So the show was really interesting and it was kind of different how they did it too. So it was, it was good. And then there was the dropout about the Theranos lab and oh, that was super interesting too. And then there's that we crashed. There are all these like stories about things that have really happened. It's just so fascinating. So those were the three that I was into and we crashed is still going on. So you'll have to let me know if you guys watched any of these or if I'm the only one that watches TV anymore. Okay, we're reaching the last stitches of our single crochet. So now we're gonna change our stitch marker and I'll be starting on round 10. As you single crochet, your work starts to turn in on you. So just make sure that you're turning it out with each round. So it can get a little confusing. Okay, so now we're starting on round 10 and we will just be single crocheting again. So I'm just gonna do a few stitches just to show you how I like to use this stitch marker. Just get the random hair that I always find in every video. <laughs> Okay, so now we will look at this and our stitch marker is, is marking round nine. So then we have nine, 10, and then we'll move on to 11 all the way up through 16. We're finishing up the last few stitches of round 16. We are going to change our stitch marker when we're all done. We still have 48 stitches. Here is what we have so far. So this is going to be this, the main part of the head. Go ahead and grab that stitch marker that you used for counting your rounds and just add that to your working yarn so our yarn doesn't unravel while we do our embroidery. We're gonna be working on the nose first. So what I like to use for the nose is a piece of worsted weight yarn. I use a pink color or you can use the contrasting color that you are using for the cat. Doesn't matter, use what you'd like. Because a piece of the worsted weight yarn is just a little too thick for my liking, I unravel the yarn just a little bit and I grab two pieces of the yarn. Since it's worsted, it has four pieces of little threads of yarn. So I take two and I save two for another project. It just makes the yarn a little bit thinner. If you want to use embroidery floss, feel free to use that as well. Once I have my two strands of yarn, I will place that into my embroidery needle and then I will just make a knot at the end. Okay, once you have your yarn ready, I go ahead and grab a pin because I want to place a pin just to get me started with my nose placement. I am gonna count from round 13 to 14. I like to put my pin in the center of the head and kind of mark my way down. So I'm just gonna stick it right here. I'm not gonna count just yet. I just wanna find my middle. Then I like to grab another piece and now we'll start counting our rounds. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We know that eight is that little ridge. So if you wanna start there, that's totally fine. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So I wanna place my pin between round 13 and 14. So I'm just gonna scooch it up just a little bit and just center it. Once you have your pin in place, be very careful so you don't poke yourself. We wanna get that pink yarn attached. So go ahead and grab a piece of yarn on the inside of the head near that pin and pull it through all the way till you're not. Then you're gonna grab another piece of the same piece, it doesn't matter, and you're gonna go up through the head and you're gonna pull your needle all the way through. You're gonna pull your needle through slowly until you have a little loop on the end. Then you're gonna place your needle behind the loop and pull through to make a knot. You can make another knot by doing the same thing. From here, we have our pin in between round 13 and 14. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make sure it's centered. I'm gonna see where I have my pin and then I'm gonna scooch over a stitch from where I have my pin. I am gonna leave two stitches open, this one and this one. I'm gonna insert my needle into that stitch. So skip, skip, and place that needle into that third stitch. Once you have your nose in place, make sure it looks centered to you because it's really easy to pull it out and just move over a stitch. But for me, this looks pretty centered, and so I'm happy with where it's at. Once you're happy with it, go ahead and go back on the inside of the head. You're gonna grab a stitch of yarn again. You're gonna pull that through, go slow until you have a loop, go behind the loop and make a knot. I am gonna make another one just to be secure. 
you can go ahead and snip off that yarn and your nose is done. We're gonna get ready to embroider on the eyes. So I have just this like DMC floss and this comes with six strands. So what I like to do is take three and then I'll save the other three for another project. I cut a pretty long piece of thread just to be safe that I have enough and then I'll save this other piece for later. I like my eyes to be a little less thick and if you like the really black thick look, keep the whole piece of thread. It's always just your preference. I'm going to make a few knots on the end of this thread and then we'll get ready to embroider the eyes. We are going to start by placing the first eye right next to the nose. So I'm going to secure it in the inside of the head kind of by where my nose is. So I'm going to pull it all the way through to my knot. I'm going to grab another piece of yarn on the inside pull through and go slow. You'll have this loop and go behind the loop. I'm gonna insert my hook up through my head in that stitch right next to my nose. So go ahead and pull that through. Then what we're gonna do is we are gonna move up around and over a stitch. So I move up and over and I'm gonna go straight down into the head. Then I'm gonna leave a stitch open back between that round 13 and 14, and I'm gonna move and in, go up into the stitch over. Then I'm gonna go down into that top stitch again, the same stitch, and then that will make my eye. I'm gonna add a little bit of an eyelash, but you can feel free to skip that if you'd like. I'm gonna go back up through that corner stitch again. It can be a little tough because you're grabbing onto the other threads, but just do your best. And then I just scooch up around and I just move over. I am not good at eyebrows or eyelashes, I mean, so just kind of do what looks good to you. I'm gonna go back up through that stitch again and just kind of scooch over and go a tad bit lower to make my next eyelash. So nothing special, just two little eyelashes. To make our next eye, all we're going to do is move over into that stitch next to the nose again. So go ahead and pull up through the head. Move up one round and over a stitch. Go down into the head. Leave one stitch open on that bottom between round 13 and 14. Go up and then go down through that top stitch. Make your eyelashes if you'd like, and then your eyes are done. And now your sleepy cat is all finished. Sleepy cat eyes, I should say. Okay, so we are going to grab a little bit of yarn on the inside, make a loop and pull that through, and I'm just gonna make another one for extra security. Go ahead and snip off that extra piece of yarn and then probably the hardest part of this whole thing is done. Okay, now that we're done making our eyes and our nose, we're gonna take out that extra stitch marker. We're gonna put our hook back into our working yarn and we're gonna get started on round 17. If you haven't changed your stitch marker, do that now. For round 17, we're gonna do something a little different. We are going to start with a decrease. So we are gonna take two stitches and we are going to turn it into one. I like to personally make an invisible decrease for amigurumi, so I'm gonna show you how. We're gonna go under the front loop of that first stitch. We're gonna take our hook and go directly under the second front loop of the next stitch. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, We'll have two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through. I have a video that goes really slow and I'll link that down below if you need extra help. When making a decrease, we wanna make sure that our yarn is up to our hook because if we leave it loose, we'll end up making holes. From here, we're gonna single crochet in each of the next four stitches. So we're just gonna make a normal single crochet. So go into that next stitch. Here's single crochet one. We're gonna scooch over for two, three, and four. Now we're gonna make another invisible decrease. So we're gonna place our hook underneath the front loop of the first stitch, go over underneath the front loop of the second, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. 
Then we're going to single crochet in the next four stitches. Here is our third decrease. We're going to be making a total of eight decreases. Underneath the front loop, underneath the front loop again, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. We're going to single crochet in the next four stitches. And again, I have a video that goes really slow on the decrease, so go ahead and watch that if you need a refresher. Here is single crochet four. We're going to make another decrease. Single crochet in each of the next four stitches. Here is our fifth decrease. We're going to single crochet in each of the next four stitches. Here is another decrease. Single crochet in each of the next four stitches. Here is a decrease. Single crochet in the next four stitches. We're going to make our last decrease and then we'll end with a single crochet in the last four. Going into our last stitch here, we're going to change our stitch marker. For the end of round 17, we're going to have 40 stitches. So you just might want to double check and make sure you have 40. For round 18, we're going to do the decreases again and then a few single crochets. So we're going to start out with a decrease and then single crochet in the next three. So here is our first decrease. We're doing that invisible decrease again. Then we're going to single crochet in each of the next three stitches. So here is our second and then our third. We're going to make our second decrease. We're making a total of eight. So here is our second. And then we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches. Here's our third decrease. Single crochet in each of the next three. Here is another decrease. Single crochet in the next three stitches. Then we have a decrease again. Single crochet in each of the next three. Another decrease. Single crochet in each of the next three. Here's our seventh decrease. Single crochet in the next three. And then our eighth and final decrease, ending with three single crochet. At the end of round 18, we'll have 32 stitches. You can go ahead and change your stitch marker. For round 19, we will make one decrease and then we'll single crochet in the next two stitches. Here is our first decrease. 
single crochet in each of the next two. We are almost done, you guys, with this head. Go ahead and make your second decrease. Single crochet in the next two stitches. Here's our third decrease. Single crochet in the next two. Our fourth decrease. Get out the random hair <laughs> again. And then we are going to single crochet in the next two. Here is a decrease. Single crochet in the next two. Decrease. Sorry, I'm having so many fuzzies in here. Single crochet in the next two. We have another decrease. Single crochet in the next two. And then our last and final decrease, single crochet in the next two. At the end of round 19, we will have 24 stitches. Change your stitch marker and then grab that other stitch marker because we're going to add a bit of stuffing and we don't want to lose our spot. So you can place that in your working yarn. Go ahead and grab some of your polyfill stuffing and just grab a handful and start placing it in there. The one thing with this cat is you want to keep the head flat. So I'm just fluffing this up a little bit because mine was pretty matted down. And I'm just going to start stuffing. Once you have a good amount of stuffing in, you just want to make sure that you're keeping this flat. You can have a little bit of a um, rounded top, but the whole point of making that square was to kind of keep it flat. And so for me, this was a little too much. I like to only stuff it so I can still squish it. I don't want to make it so taut that it's hard for me to crochet because that's when you'll also make bigger holes in that bottom part. So make sure you can still squish it. We're going to start stuffing it every round. And if you have a certain way that you like to stuff, feel free to do that as well. So for round 20, we are going to make one decrease and then we're going to make a single crochet. So we're just going to alternate a decrease and a single crochet. Once you add your stuffing, it can be a little bit tough to kind of get a grasp on holding it again. So just take your time. This is where I tend to really slow down. So here we have our first decrease and make a single crochet. We're going to repeat that eight times. So just keep going, making a decrease and then a single crochet. Okay, we're making our last single crochet of round 20. We will have 16 stitches left. Go ahead and change your stitch marker. You can grab your other stitch marker or leave a really long piece of yarn so that you don't unravel. So I'm making this little hole in the middle. I like to add stuffing to that hole. For me, it just helps to um, not have lumps in my amigurumi. So I'm gonna add, making sure that the top is pretty flat and I'm just gonna keep making this hole and adding it to that middle hole. We only have one more round after this before we close her up. So we're actually gonna be able to add another 
bit of stuffing after the next round. So don't worry if it's still a little bit more you can go. You have a little bit of room to add a little bit more stuffing. I'm gonna call it from here because I can still kind of smush her head. All we're going to do now for round 21 is make decreases all around. So we're gonna make eight total. Here's our first decrease. And then move over to make your second and just continue decreasing until the end. Making our last decrease here, what we're going to do is add just a tad bit more stuffing and I'm going to make this hole right here in the middle and then I'm just going to start adding some stuffing and this is my last chance to stuff so I'm really going to try to stuff what I can in here. The back of your crochet hook works wonderfully especially when you have that comfort grip, <laughs> it really helps to hold it. And if not, there usually comes a stick in your stuffing. I am a huge smusher when I do my stuffing, so I'm constantly adding and smushing. And add as much stuffing as you like. If you like it really stiff, just keep on adding. Just try to keep that top of your head somewhat flat. Okay, so I'm happy with the stuffing that I have and now we need to close up this hole. I don't usually end with eight stitches, but for this one, it was just a different pattern. So we're gonna close it up from here, leave a long tail, get set up with your yarn again. And from here, we're gonna fasten off. So all we're gonna do is just yarn over and pull that yarn through. I like to give it a little tug at the end and now we are fastened off. Go ahead and grab your yarn needle. You can take out your stitch marker and we are going to find our eight stitches. So I like to start backwards. That's our fastened off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Usually the last stitch is pretty hidden, but since we're using eight, it's here. You're gonna take your yarn needle down the front loop of the stitch and pull through. I'm gonna scooch over a stitch and I'm gonna pull through that front loop. Every time I pull through, I just turn my head so that, that stitch is in front of me. So here is five, six, seven, and then we're going into our eighth and last stitch. Okay, to close up, you wanna take your fingers and we're gonna start closing up this hole by pulling on the yarn, but you wanna keep an eye on that hole because we need to add our needle back through that hole. If you don't know where the hole is, but you just wanna find it, go ahead and place your needle somewhere in the vicinity and it'll start to open up. Once you find that hole, you can just weave your yarn through your head and then pull tight. This will help to get a flatter surface on your amigurumi and it just helps to close up the hole. It doesn't matter if it looks a little funny. If something happened, do not worry because the body is gonna go right over that. We just wanna make sure that the hole is somewhat closed up. Weave your yarn through your head really well and then just give that a snip and we are done with the head. We are done with the head. She already looks super cute. We're gonna move on to the ears next. Moving on to the ears next, we're gonna stick with our white, our main color. We're gonna grab our hook. I'm going to make a slip knot. So go ahead and do that however you'd like, or you can follow me here. We are gonna make three single crochet into a magic circle. So you can do that however you'd like. I am just going to chain two. So here is one and two and then i'm going to single crochet three times in that second chain from the hook here is single crochet one going back through the same stitch single crochet two back to the same stitch single crochet three here i am going to place a stitch marker we have stitch one two and three and then we have that little bit there from our slip knot. I'm gonna tighten up my magic circle. And since we're only starting out with three stitches, you really have to pull your hook over 
to get to that first stitch. So it feels a little bit awkward. And sometimes I even have to use my finger to get under that stitch because it can be a little bit hard to get started. So get that hook underneath your first stitch and we'll start round two. For round two, we are going to increase in each stitch around. So that just means two single crochet into the same stitch. So here is single crochet one. Back through that same stitch, single crochet two. Move over and we're gonna make another increase. We'll make two single crochet. And then we're gonna make an increase in our last stitch, which is the stitch with the stitch marker. At the end of round two, you'll have six stitches. You can change your stitch marker. I'm gonna tighten up my magic circle one more time. And then if you have to flatten out your stitches, go ahead and do that now. Just making sure we have six stitches. Here is our sixth stitch. This will be our first one here. For round three, we are going to make one increase and then we're gonna make one single crochet. So moving into the first stitch, we're just gonna go under those two loops and make an increase. So here is single crochet one, back to the same stitch two. I'm gonna scooch over to my next stitch and make one single crochet. Then I'm gonna repeat this. I'm gonna make another increase and then a single crochet. Here's our last increase. And then we'll make a single crochet to finish up. At the end of round three, you'll have nine stitches. Change your stitch marker. If your work starts to turn it on itself, just kind of push it back out. And then for round four, all we're gonna do is single crochet around into the next nine stitches. Okay, so we're just single crocheting all the way around. Your work will turn in on your finger as you see mine. You'll just keep pulling it back out the other way. So this one really turned in on me. I'm just gonna keep every round just pulling it back out and that'll keep you on track. Okay, so that's it for the ear. We're gonna leave a long tail. I'm gonna leave an extra long one because we are going to close this up. From here, we're just gonna fasten off. I'm gonna yarn over, pull all the way through, give it a little tug at the end, take out my stitch marker. And then from here, I just like to tuck in that magic circle piece. Mine's always super long. <laughs> if you want to, you can just cut it a little shorter. And then I personally like to sew my ears shut. You don't have to do this, but I do feel like it makes things a little easier when attaching. So grab your yarn needle and get that in there. I like to move over to my next stitch just to pull in that bit of yarn. And then just really simply here, I just go back and forth going underneath two stitches. So I'll grab any two and go through and then back the other way and go through again. And so I'm just gonna grab that little corner stitch here and that's it. I'm gonna put this to the side Go ahead and rewind the video for the ear and you are gonna make one more and then we will meet back for the body. We're gonna be moving on to the body next. So go ahead and grab your yarn, your hook and your stitch marker. For round one, we are gonna start out with four single crochet into a magic circle. So do that however you would like or you can go ahead and start with a slip knot and then we will chain two. So get set up with your slip knot and then we will chain one and chain two. From here, I'm gonna single crochet four times in that second chain from the hook. So here is one, back to the same stitch, two, three, and four. I'm gonna grab my stitch marker, close up that magic circle, and then we have four stitches. We're gonna ignore that little bit from the slip knot. For round two, we are gonna start out like we did with the head. So in the first stitch, we're just gonna make one single crochet. So get your hook underneath that first stitch, can just be a little bit tricky, and make a single crochet. 
Move over to the next stitch and place three single crochet into the same stitch. So here is single crochet one, go back to that same stitch, two, back in again, three. Move over to the next stitch and make one single crochet. And then we're gonna end in that last stitch with three single crochet. We're trying to make a little bit of a square like we did for the head. At the end of round two, you'll have eight stitches, change your stitch marker, and then just pull out those stitches if they start to turn in on you. Go ahead and close up that magic circle again, and we'll start with round three. For round three, we're gonna repeat this again. So we're gonna make a single crochet in the first stitch and then three in the next. So going underneath the first stitch, we're gonna make one single crochet. Moving over, make three single crochet into the next stitch. Oops. Move over and make one single crochet. And then move over to the next stitch to make three single crochet into that same stitch. Move over to make one single crochet and then make three single crochet into your next stitch. Then we'll make one single crochet and with three single crochet into that same stitch. At the end of round three, you'll have 16 stitches. You can change your stitch marker. For round four, we are going to make a single crochet in the next two stitches, and then we'll make three in that corner stitch. Here's single crochet one, move over, single crochet two, make three single crochet into that next stitch. Then we're gonna place a single crochet in the next three stitches and then three in that corner. So here's single crochet one, move over, single crochet two, single crochet three, and then we're going to make three single crochet into the same stitch. Make a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then make three single crochet into this corner stitch here. Make a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. and then place three single crochet into your corner stitch. Place one single crochet to end, and we are done with round four. You'll have 24 stitches at this point. For round five through seven, we are going to single crochet in each of the next 24 stitches, so make sure that you have 24 and then we will meet back at the end of round seven. So crochet for two rounds and we'll meet back. Okay, we're making the last few single crochets of round seven. From here, we're gonna change our stitch marker. We still have 24 stitches. For our last round, round eight, we're gonna go and do our decrease. So we're gonna make a decrease and then single crochet in the next two stitches. So here we're gonna make our invisible decrease and then single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Here's one and two, and then another decrease. Single crochet in the next two. We have a decrease. And then single crochet in the next two. I'm gonna let you guys count a decrease, single crochet in the next two.
We're getting into our last stitch. We're gonna take out our stitch marker. We have 18 stitches at this point. Leave an extra long tail because this is will be assembly onto the head, so we wanna leave a long tail. And then we're gonna fasten off, yarn over, and pull through. You can add a bit of stuffing. Now this is a really small body and it's very shallow, so just fit what you can. I'll just give you a little sneak peek of how it would look when her head is attached. Place your body to the side and we're gonna work on the tail next. We're moving on to the tail. Grab that contrasting color that you chose, your hook and your stitch marker. There'll be no stuffing needed for the tail. We're gonna start out with six single crochet into a magic circle. So do that however you'd like, or you can start with a slip knot and chain two. I'm making my slip knot, I'm chaining two. And then I'm gonna single crochet six times into that second chain from the hook. So same thing we've been doing the whole pattern. I'm gonna tighten up my magic circle. I'm gonna place a stitch marker on the last stitch of the round, and then we'll start on round two. Round two, we're gonna make an increase in the first stitch, single crochet in each of the next two. So here, get your hook underneath that first stitch, and we'll make an increase. Two single crochet into the same stitch. Single crochet in each of the next two. So here is single crochet one, and two, and then we're going to make another increase, and then single crochet in the next two stitches. From here, we're going to have eight stitches. You can change your stitch marker, tighten up that magic circle, and then make sure to adjust your stitches because they are gonna turn in on you. Okay, from round three through five, we are going to just single crochet all the way around. So this is gonna be one of those um, parts of the pattern that you just wanna throw a show on <laughs> because you are gonna be crocheting a lot. I'm just gonna mark this stitch so I know that it's three. You guys can do that as well. This is like what we did in the head. And then we'll just continue crocheting. Go ahead and single crochet from round three through five. I'm gonna meet you back at the end of round five because we are gonna do a color change and I wanna show you that. Okay, we're reaching the end of round five. I'm going into my last single crochet. From here, I'm gonna insert my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through. When I have two loops on the hook, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna grab my other color, for me it's white, and then we are going to change colors. What I like to do is grab my white and I just make a knot around that other color. This is the easiest way for me to change colors. Go ahead and pull that knot all the way down. So now we're gonna change to our white. So get set up with your white yarn. You're gonna yarn over and pull that yarn through. Now your last stitch is pink, but you're gonna be starting with your white. So this is the end of round five. Go ahead and change your stitch marker. For round six through 28, you have your pink marked, and you know that's round five, but the beauty of changing colors is now you know that the white is round six. So you don't have to really keep track with that stitch marker anymore, because you'll know that white is round six, and from then on you can count from there. Go ahead and continue crocheting all the way to round 28. No stuffing needed, just keep on going and then we'll meet back at the end of round 28. Once you get a few stitches in, you can go ahead and snip off that pink yarn and just work with your white. Okay, I'm working on the last few stitches of round 28 and we are almost done with our tail and we'll be done with our crocheted pieces. So I almost ran out of yarn, so luckily here, I'm just gonna fasten off and then I'm gonna take out my stitch marker. I'm gonna close this tail up, you don't have to. So I'm gonna grab my yarn needle. I'm gonna pull my yarn needle through the next stitch over just to tuck that piece in. And then I'm just gonna close like two or three stitches. You wanna make sure that your color changes in the back. So I just like to flatten out the piece and just sew from there. 
Okay, our tail is done. You can place that to the side and we will start with assembly next. A quick side note guys, I do have this little flower that I placed in her hair and I didn't include this in the crochet long because I have a separate video. If you'd like to make this flower before we assemble, I will put the video down below and I'll also put it up here in the corner. Okay, the most fun part, our assembly. We're gonna start out by assembling our ears first. In my pattern, it says to attach them between round six and seven, and really you can attach them wherever you'd like. I do attach them right before that little line, right before we made that back loop stitch. So I am going to place my ears right at the corner of the edge, and I'm gonna pin these in place. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side just to get an idea of how it looks and then we can figure out where we want to attach. It doesn't matter whether your working yarn is on the inside or the outside, it just, as you start attaching, you'll see what is easier for you. Okay, so I have these in place and I think they look pretty good to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna grab my yarn needle. I'm gonna take out this other ear and this first pin because things do get in the way. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna start by placing my needle into a stitch of the head and I'm gonna go from behind. So I have that in place. I'm gonna go right through that corner stitch of the ear and I'm gonna pull that all the way through. Okay, so now that I have one attached, I'm gonna take out all my pins because I need to see underneath this ear. I'm gonna scooch over on a stitch of the head Pull that all the way through. Now I'm gonna go through a stitch of the ear again. So here I'm gonna try to show you. I'm going underneath the stitch, but I go underneath both loops of the stitch. So I have two stitches, four loops total. So pull that all the way through. And then each time I just wanna make sure that the placement is where I want it. Go underneath a stitch of the head, pull all the way through, and then do a stitch of the ear. There are many ways to attach, so if this feels awkward to you, I would just do a quick YouTube Google search and see if there's another way that just works better for you. Don't feel like you need to do it my way. Okay, I'm going underneath the stitch of the head and then the ear again. Grabbing my last stitch of the head, I'm just kind of grabbing up this corner bit. And then I'm gonna grab kind of this side piece here. I like to pull down the edges of the ears. I'm gonna go through there, and this looks good, so I'm happy with it. I personally like to make a knot at the end of my work, and you don't need to do this, you can just weave your yarn in, but I'm gonna show you how I make the knot. So I go close to where I was, and I grab a stitch of the head. I pull that through, and I go slow, because we're gonna make a loop at the end, kind of exactly like we did when we did the eyes. So pull through, you're gonna make a loop, and then you're gonna put your needle behind your loop. I seesaw this shut, and if the knot is a little loose, do not worry about it because we're gonna weave that right in next to the piece. So weave your yarn in, your knot will follow, and it will go right into the head. Weave your yarn in really well, and then just cut off the excess piece. And there it is, one ear is done. I'm gonna get the second ear set up. Okay, you can insert and get your yarn ready. And then I'm gonna take out that corner pin just to get me started. So I'm gonna go underneath, this time I'm starting from the outside in. I'm gonna grab that corner bit and pull up through the head and then grab that corner piece of my ear. So now that I'm attached, I'm taking out this other pin and I'm gonna go move over a stitch and grab a stitch of the head. So doing the same exact thing, I'm going up through the head and then up through the ear, going underneath two stitches, four loops total.
Okay, I just went into my last stitch of the ear and I'm just pulling this tight. I'm going to make a knot, so I'm just gonna grab any piece here. I'm gonna pull through slowly, make a loop, and then I'm gonna go behind the loop to make my knot. Okay, we're gonna get that shut, and then we are just gonna weave in our piece like usual. So this knot really just helps to keep these things in place. I recommend it if you're gonna gift this or sell this for younger kiddos because I have seen my pieces come apart pretty quickly when my daughter plays with them. So this just kind of keeps things in place a little bit longer. Okay, once you have everything weaved in, you can fluff up everything and she's looking really good. So we're gonna move on to the body next. For the body, my pattern says to attach it between round 18 or 19 of the head. I'm gonna start from here because I know that this is round eight and I'm just gonna count between round 18 and 19. And for me, it's about right here and you can place this however you'd like. I am just gonna mark my round 18 and 19 with some pins because then I'm gonna try to reach my body to those stitches. You do not have to do this. If you've placed this and you like where it is, don't worry about counting the rounds. That's just a guideline. So you see here we have our four corners of our body, so you want to attach that so the two corners are in the front. Here I'm going to grab a stitch of the body and I'm just gonna pull it out a bit just to meet up with that round. I'm gonna pull it out a little bit and then pin it up. I'm gonna do that all the way around the body. Okay, once you've placed all your pins, just make sure that you are turning your body around and making sure that everything looks good to you. And then you can get set up with your yarn needle. To start attaching your body to your head, you're just gonna grab a stitch of the head first. You're gonna pull that all the way through, and then I like to turn my piece upside down, it's just easier to grab onto, and I'm gonna find that first stitch that wasn't worked into. Here's my one that was worked into, I'm going moving over, and I'm gonna pull it through a stitch of the body. You wanna make sure to go under both loops. You're gonna move over a stitch of the head, pull all the way through, and then you're gonna go underneath a stitch of the body. You never wanna skip a stitch of the body because you will be able to tell once you're all finished. So from here, I'm just gonna kinda of stay on this round that I've been working on of the head. Grab a stitch. You can grab two stitches if you need to because the body is smaller. Sometimes you need to kinda of catch up to it. So you can grab two stitches of the head and then grab the next stitch of the body. Every few stitches, make sure that your body is straight and then it's in the place that you want it to be because things can get off really quickly when attaching. So you'll see me flip it over, give it a look, and then just make sure that I'm on the right track of where I wanna be. We're gonna continue this all the way around. So you're gonna do a stitch of the head, you can grab a stitch or two, and then grab a stitch of the body. Okay, I'm reaching my last stitch here. I have one more stitch to go. So I'm grabbing a stitch of the head and now a stitch of the body. Okay, from here I wanna make my knot again. So I'm just gonna grab any little piece. I'm grabbing a stitch of the head, pull through, make your loop. This one gets pretty twisty. So just kind of get it straight and then get your needle through there to make your knot. Weave in your knot really well and then you can cut off the excess piece. Okay, so we've attached our body. Now all we need to do is grab our tail and then we will be almost done. 
Okay, for our tail, we wanna make sure that our color change is gonna be in the front. So here I'll show you, we're gonna attach the tail in the back. We're just gonna kinda line it up. It doesn't look the best in the back, <laughs> but it's kinda the only way I could figure this out. So what we're gonna do is bring the tail around. So you wanna make sure that that color change is in the back so you don't see it. An option you can do is you can grab this cat brush that we have. It's kind of ironic, the cat for the cat brush. But if you wanted to make a fluffy tail or you wanted to do a fluffy body or head, this would be the time to do it, especially for the tail. So I'm just going to brush it out just a little bit. I'm not going to do anything fancy. You do want to make sure with this cat brush that you be careful at your magic circle because I have pulled out that piece of yarn by going a little too fast and not paying attention at that first round. All you do with the cat brush, you can go back and forth with these quick motions and just do it until you're happy. I'm just going to line up the back of that tail and then we're going to start attaching. Okay, I didn't use any pins here because we're only doing a few, so I got my tail set up. Now I'm gonna grab a stitch of the head and then I'm gonna go underneath both stitches of that tail and I'm gonna pull through. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of frame for this tail and I apologize. So now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna grab a stitch of the body and then I'm gonna go through the tail. I'm kind of doing this in one motion. So I'm grabbing body, and tail at the same time. Here I did about three. I'm gonna attach this corner piece. I'm gonna do one more stitch and kind of go up a little bit. I just wanna make sure that the corner is attached. So here I'm gonna make my knot. And again, you don't have to do this, but I'm doing this in one motion here. And then I'm weaving in my yarn really well. So here we have our sleepy kitty. We wanna attach the tail so it looks like she's all wrapped up in a ball. And from here, I'm gonna grab my fabric glue. I like Aileen's fabric glue and I've also used the Elmer's fabric glue and that worked great as well. Once you get your tail in place, I'm just gonna add a little bit more glue here. Once you get your tail in place and you have it glued to where you like it, I just grab a pin and I place it in the end of the tail and I let that dry overnight. If you didn't wanna use glue, you could also use like embroidery floss and along the tail, just put a few stitches in there or you can use a piece of white yarn. If you guys decided to make the little flower, you will have two ends. I'm gonna take my yarn needle for one of the ends and I'm just gonna insert it into one of the stitches in the corner of the head. Then I'll take the other piece and I'll just go into another stitch right next to it. And I just like to make a few knots to attach the flower. Once you have it attached, you can just weave in the ends and that should be good enough. You can also add a bit of fabric glue on the end of the flower if you wanna keep it really well in place. That is it, you guys. Our Kai the Kitty is done. I did make her a little cat bed, and I did put that in a separate video, and that will be coming up in the next week or two, and it's just a really cute addition. So I wanna thank you guys for joining me on this crochet along. It means a lot to me. And if you make her a desk buddy, please let me know so we can all be desk buddies. Here she is in a different color and just looking a little bit different. And I added a few stripes to her tail so you can customize her however you'd like. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and please go to yarnsociety.com for free amigurumi patterns. And I'll see you guys soon.